I'm quitting. I'm going back to America. Hello, my name is Victoria Rose. Welcome to my channel. So I am in Westminster right now in the park and I wanted to do, uh, I, I didn't know how to follow up for my last video because I got a lot of views, a lot of inputs and um, a lot of people were saying that they understood what I was saying, but I didn't know how to follow up with that because um, everything is going to change in this channel for me. It's a bigger change inside myself even than outside. Before we get into the whole new lifestyle, I wanted to do a pros and cons of solo female travel because I've done this for a very long time and I've never made a video about the pros and cons of it. In case you're wanting to go out there and travel, I think it's I think travel is a great way to expand yourself. It was really important for me. As far as solo international travel goes, I just I'm not feeling it. Like it doesn't feel good for me anymore. And as of right now, I'm quitting, going back to America and just gonna redo everything but until then we're here in London and I'm gonna give you my opinion of the pros and cons of traveling this small little world and why I kind of have more cons than pros at this point I smell like coffee before this I just got a coffee I love my new favorite thing is reading at a coffee shop I love it I will definitely miss coffee shops where I'm going next but I did spill it all over myself somehow I even got it in my hair <laughs> Americano and a pistachio raspberry slice. Yesterday was stressful and it, would, it just made me be like, I wanna go home. I really just wanna go home. Not that it's any less stressful at home, but there's these little things that people just don't think of in travel or even just living abroad that is just not glamorous and not fun, really. Like, but it makes up a lot of travel. Um. I don't want to get up today. The electricity meter went off last night. Which I had no idea what that even was until I came here. Apparently, there's a meter you have to keep filling up to have electricity. Another reason I can't look things up is because my SIM card just happened to expire today. So on my phone, I'm not able to look up where I would even take the key in. So, good morning. Like, what is this? Only take cash? How the fuck are you supposed to have electricity here? Sorry, I'm in a mood. Literally just put five, I had five pounds in my pocket, just put five pounds on <laughs> so I could get a shower. Apparently five pounds wasn't enough to get a shower. I'm so cold. This video is about the pros and cons of solo travel, not about this type of struggle. Not all apartments are metered like this. But things are getting really expensive here. People aren't happy here right now, and I'm just trying to leave. I'm trying to go back to the States for right now. It's good for me to have kind of a not the best experience here because I always thought I was going to live in London, and living here has taught me that that's not what I'm going to do. <laughs> I do like London. It's not somewhere I want to live, and I needed to live here to know that. There's two places I needed to, I felt like I just needed to go. It was South Korea and London. Uh, London to see if it's somewhere I'd want to live long term and South Korea because I kind of reclaimed Asia a bit for myself after a lot of turmoil in the past. And that felt really good and it boosted my confidence and I learned a lot and it was just a good solo traveling thing. And now I feel like I can accept and embrace going back to the States, which I could not before. Let's move location. All right, we will start with the pros because, well, there's less of those. The first pro I'd say is gaining confidence. Uh, if you're not a very confident person, you're going to feel incredibly insecure when you go out to travel. The nice thing is, is you travel more and more, you'll start to learn that really you can do anything if you just learn about it and experience just naturally gains confidence and I don't even consider myself a confident person it's just kind of like a logical confidence like uh, yeah I've done that before I can do it again so the second one for me this is a huge one as well is flexibility and you're in control of everything <laughs> if you're a control freak traveling alone you are in control of everything so you get to plan whatever you want to do no one's 
going to be offended. No one's going to hold you back. You can go and go wherever, do whatever, and no one has anything to say about it. And I do love that. I do. Number three, it's a huge perspective change. You can't go out and travel the world and come back the exact same person. Unless you're going out and you're traveling and you're just trying to party and you forget everything, which I think is pointless in my opinion. But if you're going out for a mind and cultural shift, it will happen. Another huge pro is that people need the perspectives change. Like there's so much more out in the world that you don't even understand. So perspective change, huge perspective. <laughs> so beautiful out right now. Four, you get to know yourself and not only that, but you get to trust yourself, which I don't know about you, but I didn't used to trust myself at all. And I didn't know myself either. I've learned not just through traveling, but through so many life experiences to learn and to trust myself. Um, it's another thing with the confidence thing. It's like you only have you, so you have to trust yourself. If you put yourself in that space, and I think that's beautiful and scary. Five, you learn how to problem solve alone and you are, you gain independence and you can be independent. And like I said, a lot of this goes back to confidence. If you're not a confident person, you're forcing yourself in these situations where you kind of have to be. And learning to problem solve by yourself is incredibly good um, ability to have in the real world, in any world, because then you won't rely so heavily on other people. And when there are other people, they actually add to your life. And it's not that you need them. You don't need anyone anymore. Some people are intimidated by independent people. For me, I find it better to not have to rely on help from anyone else because people do let you down. You still need them, but you need them less whenever you figure out how to do that yourself. I guess I only have six pros. <laughs> 13 cons. The last pro is you can enjoy solitude, which for me anyways is a huge pro because I'm a loner type. I do value people immensely, but I love being alone and you get to be alone all the time, <laughs> like 24 seven. And that's how you really learn yourself on the inside the most because you can just shut out the rest of the world. Like especially like here in London, no one will talk to you when you're by yourself, like nobody talks to you. When you're alone, you're all, you're very alone. It's not just um, alone, it's alone, alone. You're in a different country, you don't know anyone, sometimes you don't even know the language. And sometimes that feels really freeing, like nobody has any say. Another pro I guess I should put on that I didn't put on because it's not a pro for me is that you have, like being alone gives you the ability to meet more people. Like if you stay in places where you can meet people, it, it gives you the drive to talk to more strangers. So another pro is that you'll meet more people you probably most likely wouldn't have otherwise. What's a pro for me might not be a pro for somebody else. Huh, little bird. Moving on, we're going to go to the cons. The number one is it's more dangerous slash overwhelming, especially as a solo female traveler. It is obviously more dangerous for women to travel by themselves, especially in more dangerous countries. The second one is it's lonely. <laughs> this is probably the biggest con is lonely. If you don't have another person to share these things with. For me, I'm, a, I'm just at a point where I've done it so much that it's just like, like, yeah, you get to have these experiences, but if you don't share them with someone else, I, I sometimes feel like they, they only exist with you. Three, higher travel expense. This is the bike trail. <laughs> I think I should go on the walking trail. Looks a bit muddy. Let's go on the walking trail. A higher travel expense because... <laughs> you're not sharing with the expenses with another person like accommodation mostly probably the biggest expense when you're traveling is accommodation but no one to share the experiences with and that's why i youtube so much because most of the time I have someone to share these experiences with so i like to share it with youtube so that's really motivating for me having to carry your luggage all by yourself and also you have no one to watch your bags in like the airport. Actually carrying my bags is probably the biggest reason I, I'm so sick of solo travel or just travel in general. Living out of two suitcases, like they're so heavy, they're so cumbersome. And unless I stay in one spot for like months at a time, it's so inconvenient to have to move the bags around. If you travel light, it's not as a big deal, but I can't because I don't have a home. So I carry everything that I have with me everywhere. Six, increased anxiety and and then in turn burnout since you're getting more overwhelmed and naturally more anxious and then you get burnt out a lot easier as well seven and this is maybe not for everyone but for me and why i have this 360 camera now is that you have no one to take pictures for you like, i don't even care like there's people everywhere and i'm just walking talking to a stick 
literally that's what it is i'm walking and i'm talking to a stick Eight. Sometimes when you're feeling low, you have a harder time to motivate yourself. Like, wake up! Let's go out and do this! I really want to do this! And then you feel motivated too. Number nine. I'm trying to remember what I meant by this. Harder. It's harder to relate to people. What did I mean by that? I'm in the midst of all of these people. But, whatever. We're in our own world here. I don't re really remember what I meant by harder to relate to people. I think just like when you're traveling, it's hard to relate to people when you're just alone all the time and everyone has like normal lives and you're just out there by yourself alone in this different reality than everybody else. Sometimes if you do it without a home, you don't have a home and you don't really feel like you belong somewhere. This is a really big one for me. I just, I'm at a point where I just wanna feel like a belonging. It's very important for human beings to feel that. I haven't felt that for a while. 11, no second viewpoint on experiences. That's kind of mentioned that before. 12, you're the only one making decisions, booking things doing logistics you have to do everything obviously by yourself just remembering all the logistics you don't have someone to help you in case like if something goes wrong which happens all the time you have to troubleshoot everything by yourself that is the, the worst thing for me besides like luggage is having to just book everything it's very overwhelming that's a big con but to be fair sometimes another person makes that process more stressful so it just depends I guess on who you're traveling with I got bored of making this list and I don't have one more eating out alone isn't fun or even tourist attractions stuff like that you can make it fun I just don't do it it's not fun for me Maybe it would be for other people. But when you have another person, you can I feel like you can make more fun with them. Maybe that's me thinking that because I'm always alone and I just think the grass is greener. That's the Buckingham Palace, by the way. <laughs> just casually. So those that's my pros and cons. Let's go. I feel like this is a very English thing to eat. Some jam. So in all, it's very, very, very rewarding to travel by yourself, have these experiences by yourself, get to know yourself. And I think even though the pros list was a bit shorter, I think it was more valuable because for me, like the cons and stuff, I don't really consider. Like, it's enough for me to, to stop because there's a different, thank you, trajectory for my life. But that isn't to say that I don't recommend it. I think everyone should go out and travel at least once in their life. But I need to stop now. It's sad to say, I have mixed feelings about it. I, I'm sure in my soul of what I'm going to do next. And I'm going to tell you maybe in the next video. I don't actually know the full plan. A lot more home study type of life. It's going to be weird. It's just very strange because I, I, I never wanted to go back to America. You guys know I never wanted to live in America. And I find sometimes the things that you're running from become the things that you run to. The universe kind of makes you do a whole 180. Do the things that you're most scared of or most opposed to. So be careful because you can manifest things the opposite of what you wanted. So I hope you guys are ready for a new change and I hope that you stay with me. I should have got water with this. I hope you stay with me through all of it. I have a huge photo shoot tomorrow. I should not be eating these. But I hope that I have enlightened you in some way or something. There's a lot going on in London right now. Right, the cost of living crisis. They're having underground strikes right now. They're having postal strikes. Everyone's on strike. Um, it's just not the, the place to be right now anyways. I'm still gonna travel. But international travel, for now, is done. I did what I needed to do. Now we're gonna start over. Start over fresh, completely start over. You can always change who you are and change your life, always. So remember that, you're not stuck wherever you are. Stay extraterrestrial, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.